in there so she know where it's at I'm talking BK fine and she gon' rap it to the grave Man, I only support the real so I'ma tune in every day Way up <laughs> You are now turned into Angela What I call her, yeah Angela Yee, I'm Angela Yee, and Jasmine from the Jasmine brand is here. This is my favorite day of the week, Angela. Yeah, it's the day you stop coughing. I've <laughs> <laughs> coughing for three weeks. <laughs> oh my God, I'm, I'm being cough shamed. I'm being cough shamed. Okay, but yes, Thursday is Jasmine loves a Thursday yes. more than Friday. Yep. Mm-hmm. More than Saturday. Yep, and more than Sunday. And TK Kirkland is here with us. Yes, you, I am. It's rare that you actually spend all this time in New York. That's so true. And so I appreciate you being here. But you do have a show in Harlem tomorrow yes, and Saturday. And Saturday. And mm-hmm. please, everybody, come out, show love to Harlem. And now uh, I'm like I'm, I'm, I'm a Harlem native. Are you okay? Yeah, I've been. Are you from Jersey York. City? I'm from Jersey City, but I hung out in Harlem. But way you're back not a Harlem day. native. You're from Jersey City. I was born in Jersey City. Harlem is his second home. Yes, yeah, Harlem is the second home. Okay. I, bro- I ran the streets of Harlem. Let's okay. Put it that way. Okay. Well, where can people buy tickets? They're going to buy it at, at Harlem. Um, dot com. Okay, right. Harlem. Right. Dot com. <laughs> you just <laughs> made that. In, in up. comedy. <laughs> Damn, what is my stuff? Look, I just want to tell help me out, honey. I want to tell the people how to how to buy the tickets. But you can follow TK Kirkland, and that's how you can see. At TK underscore Kirkland. Okay. K I R K L A N D like the word at Costco. Just at Harlem. Dot com. He really runs Harlem. He got the whole website. And he said it with a straight face too. I was put me under pressure. I apologize. Okay, I'm gonna get it together. I'm sorry, TK. All right, but we're having a good time. It is a Thursday, and we do have Mastery of Comedy today. Not only is TK Kirkland guest hosting, mm-hmm. but we have a really funny comedian who's going to be joining us, Akeem Woods. So you know, funny. Every Thursday, we do Mastery of Comedy. And with Akeem, we saw him perform in D.C. He was opening for Godfrey. Yes. Shout Artie, out to Godfrey. Artie Fuqua was hosting. Okay. Yes. And Great comedian. Akeem got there late because he was coming straight from a gay cruise. <laughs> and he... Gay cruise sounds so funny to that's me. I don't know why. That, yeah, that's what, that's how he describes it—a gay cruise. Yeah, and he actually, I think, had a gay old time. Yeah, he did. He had a grand gay old time. Gay old time. And he but, killed the stage when we saw him. Basically, what you're saying. Yeah. Angela. So, and then he came on lip service mm-hmm. and had a good time with us there. And so we are proud to have him here because he actually has a lot of shows coming up that he wants to promote as well. Okay. Yes. All right. So, um, Akeem, which is going to be joining us, of course, you know, we have Ask Ye today. We have Ye T. We have Under the Radar. We're going to be talking more Donald Trump stuff. Because what I love, um, one of the Central Park Five actually took out an ad, and we'll tell you more information about okay, that. But okay. If okay. you remember the time when Donald yes. Trump took out that ad in the New York Times, Yeesh. you know about the Central Park Five and was dead wrong. Mm-hmm. Well, what goes around comes around, y'all. All right, but first we gotta shine a light on them. Let's keep it positive. 800-292-5150 is the number. If you wanna shine a light on somebody who you feel like has done something that has impacted your life positively, impacted the world positively, somebody you know in person, someone you don't know, someone you came across, a family member, whatever it is, let's spread some love. It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm a shine. I'm a shine. Turn your lights on, y'all. Turn your lights on. Spreading love to those who are doing greatness. Shine a light on them. Shine a light on them. It's time to shine a light on them. What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm here. Jasmine from the Jasmine brand is here. Mm-hmm. And TK our Kirkland. really amazing co-host, guest co-host, TK Kirkland is here. You couldn't even let her get it out, TK. Because you know what? My, my, my love for her was so strong. I was so, I, My mom was somewhere else. <laughs> then I looked at her. She was her, My name was coming out of mouth. And in my head, I was like, man, you got to learn how to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you just got overly excited. Yeah, that's what it was. Right. Because these Skittles. All right. Taste the rainbow. Taste the <laughs> rainbow. <laughs> All right. Well, yes, 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 TK. Well, Taste the rainbow. Well, to shine a light on them. And this is where you get to shout out somebody who did something positive and show some love. And Jasmine, I know you wanted to shine a light on somebody super special today. Yes, I wanted to shine a light on my brother. I, I'm the oldest. I have uh, three brothers under me. My brother, Jace. Had a birthday on April the 4th and I missed it. And oh, I, happy birthday, Jace. Now, I haven't met him personally, but we do use his who is it his PFAS We use all, a lot of okay. his accounts. You talk to him on FaceTime. Mm. And I miss it. The thing is, I miss his birthday, but he usually reminds me of everyone else's birthday. So he called me and I said, Hey, he was like, Really, Jazz? And I said, Is your birthday today? He said, It was yesterday. So Ooh. I, I want to apologize to Jace. He is one of my favorite brothers of three. 
I feel like a terrible big sister because I missed his birthday and I love you and please forgive me and also pay me back my money that you owe me. <laughs> well, now Jace, I just want to put this out there as we shine a light on you. We are using all of your accounts. We I are- mean, in my house right now, we're logged into your Peacock, we're logged into your Hulu, That's we're logged we into are. your Disney, we're logged into <laughs> your Stars app, we're logged into everything. We use all your accounts. I don't know if you owe her any money. <laughs> oh my goodness! I like her. Yeah. Happy birthday, Jace. Thank you. I, I have um, one. I want to give show love to someone. Okay. Can okay. I do that? Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, listen, I've been doing this business for 39 years of stand-up comedy, have traveled around the world. And I want to give Angela Yee Aww. her flowers is because she, out of all the people I've met, and everybody's been good to me, but my love for you is just so amazing. I don't know if people take the time to really show you how much they love you, but I wanted to share because, you know, I am 60-something years old. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? 60-something. I just want to share my love with you to let you know you're truly respected. And you truly love from a good friend, TK Kirk. Oh, Thank I love you. That. I love That's this. sweet. What a great. See, this is why Shine a Light is amazing. Who do you guys want to shine a light on? 800 292 5150. Hello, who's this? What's up, Yeezy? How you feeling? Mello, what's good? I feel like you've been neglecting us, Mello. <laughs> what? Never. I've been working. You feel me? Bless what it's too. All right, who you want to shine yeah. a light on? I actually want to shine a light on all the beautiful women out there because just because International Women's Month has come to an end doesn't mean the love, respect, and appreciation we have for women does. Okay. That's right. I'm glad you said that because somebody had just told me they was like, "All right, it's enough. Women's History Month is over. Enough with these going out to uh, happy hours." <laughs> you know, first off, no. First off, let me point out you women, successful women, y'all spend money like drug dealers. So <laughs> keep coming outside and keep having a ball. So like, I need all men going forward to not just let the month come through so you can appreciate women appreciate and respect and love women every day and not just the ones you're attracted to all right well thank you Mello. anytime hey todd who you want to shine a light on i like to shine a light on my wife and four wonderful kids your wife and four wonderful kids yep my wife jennifer all jennifer. right jennifer hey, and jennifer. tell us tell us what's so amazing about her so she could hear this she's a great mother she runs her own business jj's treat mm-hmm. And we, she works like job. <laughs> we like her already. JJ's <laughs> treats. <laughs> What's your favorite treat that she makes? Uh, Oreos. Ooh. Chocolate dip Oreos. Chocolate dip Oreos? Is that what you said? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I could go for that right now. No, all right. All right. Well, shout out to Jennifer and your four beautiful children. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. All right, well, that was Shine a Light Autumn. What a special one today. Yes. Oh, mm-hmm. oh family up here. Yeah. And when we come back, we have Yeetie. We'll be talking about Don Lemon. Apparently, mm. people at his uh, workplace are saying that he was a very toxic person. We'll tell you what they had to say on Yeetie on Way Up with Angela Yee. Say it's truth in the room. Ah! From industry shade to all the gossip. Out, Angela's spilling that Yeetie. Talk to him. What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee, and Jasmine from the Jasmine brand is here. Yes, good morning. And TK Kirkland, back again. This is your last day here with us. It's my last day, and I want to, young lady, thank you so much for showing me so much love. <laughs> young lady. I'm going to, every time I talk to you, I'm going to show you love. And thank you again. I'm back, yo, TK Kirkland. Oh, that's right. All right, well, it's time to do some Yee Tea. Okay. So, Jasmine, um, you know, you have the Jasmine brand. Mm-hmm. We get a lot of these stories from your site. Okay. All right, let's talk about Don Lemon. And now there's saying that there was misogyny on his part at CNN mm-hmm. as far as text messages, mocking female co-workers, and quote, diva-like behavior. Alright, so let's discuss. They said people who worked with him said he was a shameless name dropper mm. and left behind hints that he socialized with important people like a handwritten note from Stedman that he taped onto his computer. <laughs> You're kidding me. Oh, gosh. Uh, And then they said that uh, he frequently let drop uh, that he successfully sued Tower Records, as well as the Chicago PD for racial profiling, and that he also didn't need to worry about money thanks to those settlements. Mm. And he also openly started dating a fresh out of college staffer despite a major age difference and power imbalance. He was 41 at the time while the staffer was 22. Okay? Okay. All right. So they said, as far as you can make a rule, Don would bend it. And they said most troubling was his misogynistic behavior, according to multiple sources. Uh, They said Don Lemon called one of his producers fat to her face. Oh. Mm. And not long before he was identified as sending threatening texts to uh, Phillips, he mocked Grace on air by mimicking her, shocking fellow colleagues. And so while some people did decline a comment, a person close to her told Variety that she thinks he's an ass and that he was always rude, dismissive, and really unfamiliar with the news content being discussed. 
Do we believe this, Angela? Well, I mean, the, these are from, you know, quote unquote executives right. and from Variety. Right, so I'm sure yeah. that they check their sources. So, mm. you know, I can't tell you whether or not this is true, but it's definitely entertaining. I'll tell you that. Yeah. And I, w- I don't know why I, I wouldn't have thought that of him. Me neither. Yeah, that's true. You know, but it's sad to I'm, I'm a Don Lemon fan. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm a like, fan too. I used to watch him. I used to come in and couldn't wait to nine o'clock on the West Coast to watch him because I thought his delivery was just so amazing. And, and whatever he's going through, if he was like that, I hope that he's grown to move on to become a better person. Right. So, you know, the, and some people did go on record. So when you read the full article in Variety, then right. you can see. Yeah, they get specific. Yeah, they get very specific. Wow. He, I will say he does have a, a, a little smart mouth, <laughs> like, okay. on, you know, on camera. Like right, he does right. say some snarky things at mm-hmm. it, but you know. Okay. All right. All right. Well, Tyrese has confirmed that there is a new TGT album that's going to be happening on a recent episode of the R&B Money Podcast. Mm-hmm. The R&B Money Podcast is hosted by Tank, who's in TGT, yes. and Jay Valentine. And here's what Tyrese had to say. I got some great news. Okay. Atlantic Records has officially agreed to sign TGT for a second album. Congratulations. <laughs> hey, you're mad at me. <laughs> you're mad at me. That's a, he didn't, wow. He didn't mean congratulations. He meant you're welcome. I'm just going to say this. I'm not genuine. Why you can't have this conversation if that man is not here, brother? What did I do wrong, Jay Valentine? You didn't call G and have that conversation. I didn't call with Tank G, either. But Tank's here. All right. So, I mean, Tank, Genuine, <laughs> Tyrese. We want another album. Uh, they actually made their debut back in 2013, but then they disbanded two years later because they kept on disagreeing. So you think it's going to last? No, it's, so. it's it's not going to last. It's I don't think last. so. No, no. Yeah, I know all of them. So anything a brother's doing other than what I did with the people in the wheelchair, I wish <laughs> them <laughs> I wish them the best. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's tough. And I think that, um, you know, I remember before they had some issues, Tyrese felt like he should get paid more. He did. Mm-hmm. He said that, yeah. So I don't know if they worked past that and yeah. what the financial Everybody should get paid equally. I, yeah. you know, when you're in a group. group. You're in a group, yes. Everybody's equally bringing yeah. something to the table. I totally agree. Yeah. All right. Well, that is your YT. And when we come back, we have about last night. That's when we talk about things that went down last night. Okay. Uh, yesterday, we talked about T.K. Kirkland and his $6 ice cream, salt <laughs> ice cream cone. Yes. <laughs> so we got about last night on Way Up with Angela Yee. So about last night. Last night. Last night. Here's how it went down. What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee and TK Kirkland is here, guest co-hosting. Thank you, Brevs. Thank you. And Jasmine from the Jasmine brand. I'm back. Hey, now, I know Jasmine. neither one of you have been watching Love is Blind. Not at all. No, okay. not at all. But I actually finally finished watching this season and okay. they're going to be doing the reunion. It's going to be live streamed on Netflix. Okay. What did you think of the season finale? It was good. I mean, I enjoyed watching it because I had a lot of questions. Okay. You know, even from early on. And and this is season four right now. But I think everybody would agree the favorite couple was Brett and Tiffany. Okay. From the start. Like the two of them locked in. Right. And And does it last the whole season? So it's like one episode. How does that work? It's a whole season. I think it was like eight. So the way the show is set up. It's pods. So you, it's called Love is Blind because you don't get to see what the other person looks like. Okay. And you get to date. So it's a group of women on one side, a group of men on the other side. And basically you go into a pod, just a, a room, but there's a wall in between you. Okay. And you guys just have conversations without knowing what the other person looks like. Mm-hmm. You know what they do for a living. You might know, you know, how their family was raised. People have like real conversations. They start crying. Aww. They get emotional. Yeah. You know, they open up about a lot of things. But a lot of times people form a bond with more than one person Mm -hmm. because you're in there for hours. You could fall asleep while you're in there. Mm -hmm. You could be having a drink while you're talking to the other person. You just have no idea what they look like. Because the idea of it is that looks don't matter. It's about personality and it's about connection. Right. And so I don't know how much looks matter to you, TK Kirkland. I'm visual, but I'm I'm at a point in my life. It has to be visual. You got to have great character. And what have you accomplished in your life? Those right. things are important to me. Okay, so I want to ask you this. There was a couple of uh, couples that this happened with. So imagine you make a connection with somebody. You're on the show, mm-hmm. right? And you get to see the other person if you propose and they accept. Mm. That's when you get to They leave. have to accept right. it. Yeah. Yes. Okay. 
So imagine you propose to somebody, or yeah, you propose to somebody they don't accept. So then that person then proposes to someone else because they had a first choice and a second choice. Right. Oh, and I'm the second choice. And you're the second choice, oh. but you really love this person oh. from the yeah. connection that you've made. Right. Okay. Could you be okay with the fact that just yesterday they proposed to someone else, that person said no, and now they're proposing to you? But this is who you want to be with. You know, this is your person. Listen, I know it's not a popular answer, but I think I could be someone's number two if I really loved him. It was really into him. How can you love someone so fast? Because uh, we talked. I just listened to him. We connected. It was, you know, I didn't need to see them. I, I think I could be someone's okay. number two. And, and, and that's not, how most women have their issues because y'all fall on words. That's, and, yeah. I didn't say, look. <laughs> so I, I, I don't know, Jasmine, because... I feel like there would be some jealousy that came into play because oh. you would know the other woman too. You guys are living in the house Angela, together. Angela, you yeah. know me well enough to know that it's going to be some jealousy. Because you're going to bring it up every 10 minutes. You, right. What about that? Angela, you know I'm going to bring it up every 10 you minutes. Are. You know, I don't let things go. Okay, okay. I yeah, can see that about gonna you. It's not going to work, but I'm still going to be like, yes, yeah. I will be your number two. Okay, okay. It's an awful thing to, to, to say. But you would do it. Okay, what about you, yeah. TK? Let's just say you connected with a woman and you were really into her because this happened on the show also. Mm -hmm. And then she ends up telling you, I can't talk to you anymore because I, you know, I like this person and I really had a connection. Is it a guy or girl? It's a girl. You know, it's a, two women. It's a woman. Okay. And she's like, but I decided to choose this other person. But then, Which is, she's as a female that she chose. Yeah. Okay. No, no, no. Another man. Another man. Okay. It's on your okay. side. One okay. of the guys, one of your bros. You've okay, been right, out right. With. Okay. Mm -hmm. But then let's just say that doesn't work out. Would you be okay with getting with her after that? If it was somebody you really grew to care about, does that matter to you? I wouldn't do it, huh? <laughs> no, no, I wouldn't do it, huh? No, no, I wouldn't do it. No, no. It's a no for me, though. Just, yeah, just, 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 just how I move through life. That, that's not me. You do like, number two? No, nah, I couldn't be. No, nah, I'd be number two on my own terms, but not on national TV. <laughs> <laughs> if people know about it. Yeah, if people know about it, no. But behind closed doors, nobody know about it. You can move through with respect oh, all day. I've been number five. <laughs> well, it's going to be interesting to watch this reunion because in certain situations, I feel like people, once they got to see each other and they all went on vacation together. Yes. Mm. I feel like some people regretted their choice and wish they had chosen the other person. That's I'm true. Sure that could happen. Yeah. Especially, Especially once you see the way they yes. move. And physical attraction, I don't care what anybody says, that does matter. Yep. Thank you, honey. If, if, if it's two people you like and then you're like, I oh, don't know. Right. And then you see them and one of them is more appealing to you. And that doesn't mean they're more attractive, but they're more appealing to you. Yes. Right. For whatever reason. Because we all have yep. our own different definitions of what's attractive. So yes, we do. I like that. He's right. All right. right. Well, that is about last night. For everybody who watches Love is Blind, don't be afraid to chime in and let us know what you think. <laughs> it's Way Up with Angela Yee when we come back. And since today is Thursday, I thought it'd be fun to do a little something, something. Now, y'all know I've been doing radio for almost 20 years. Yes, wow. that's a long time. Yes, I started off as Sirius, and then I came to iHeart. Mm -hmm. And so... Part of history, I've done some things that I feel like everybody doesn't know about. Right. So when I was on, uh, I actually interviewed Drake over the phone for a segment called wow. Don't Quit Your Day Job. <laughs> and this was before he was signed. Wow. This is before he was signed to Young Money. This is when he was on Degrassi. Wow. And so we have a little snippet of that just so you guys can hear what it sounded like. All right. It's uh, Throwback Thursday coming up on Way Up with Angela Yee. You vibe the Way Up with Angela Yee. What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee. TK Kirkland is here. Yes, I am. And Jasmine from the Jasmine brand is here. Happy Thursday. Happy Thursday. And it is a throwback Thursday. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes we revisit moments in our life like, wow, I can't believe I did that when right. I was younger. And I used to, before the Breakfast Club, have this segment called... Don't quit your day job. And that's when unsigned artists would submit their music. And if it was good, we would play it on the air and people would call in and comment and say what they thought about it. Okay. Well, I had a young Drake. <laughs> wow. Um, before he was signed to Young Money. Okay. He actually had a song with Trey Songs at this time because first Trey Songs wanted to sign him. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is early, early, early on. This is when he was on Degrassi. People knew him for being in a wheelchair. I know that's triggering for you, TK. Yes, it is. <laughs> but he played a character in a wheelchair. <laughs> yeah, my, my, who brought me up on that? My son yeah. told me that, that Drake was, used to be an actor. So he was acting on that series between 2001 and 2008. So it was somewhere around that time when you had this conversation with him. Yeah, absolutely. So And it's very charming. So I can't <laughs> wait for you guys to hear it because he was always a great artist. Right. All right. So Throwback Thursday, here I am with Drake before the Breakfast Club. We're about to do Don't Quit Your Day Job. Yep. We have our boy Drake on the phone. What's up, Drake? What's going on, y'all? It's nice to be here. 
Oh, he's here with us. Yeah. So let's is. let's find out some info about you. Where are you from? Well, I'm from Toronto, Canada. I was raised in Memphis, Tennessee. And, uh, yeah, that's where I'm from. That's where I rep. All right, so what is your day job right now? My day job, well, I, I act on a TV show called Degrassi, The Next Generation, and it's on the MTV Noggin Network. So that's what I do on the daily. I'm, a, I'm an actor, but I, I just I just had this um, this hip-hop thing going on for so long. Uh. My father and my uncle, well, my uncle wrote for Al Green. My uncle is Maven Hodges. Um, he yeah. wrote for Al Green, and my dad drawn for Jay Lee Lewis. It, it, it goes around, you know, it's in the mm. family. My other uncle is Larry Graham from Graham Central Station, so. Love it. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's there, definitely. It's present in the family. So I just had to, I just had to look, put my little contribution in. Nice. Now, do you have a major label deal yet? I don't. I'm doing this all on my own, you know. And, and shout out to all the people that have shown me love thus far. Uh, especially my own boy, Trey Songs. I'm about to go right after this. We're going to the video shoot for Wonder Woman today. He's in Toronto. He's in my city doing this thing with Little X. So, you know, you just gotta, you just gotta, you just gotta network and you gotta, you gotta show people that you're serious, man. And you gotta get it going for yourself. But no, I do not have a major label deal. All man. right. Well, let's play your first song. Okay. Replacement Girl. This is a song with Trey Songs, right? Yes. yes. We're going to get into that. Let me show you what it is. I was birthed up top, but was raised at the bottom of the map where the girls all thick and the hottest to grab. If you looking for the good, and we got him in a trap like took her from white snakes to this metaphor might sound a little confusing, but y'all really don't even know me. How to come a long way from a day's end and other hotels that I stayed in. I took a lifestyle from mediocre to good, and that would say it's sitting at amazing. And that is Drake with Replacement Girl. Drake, you still with us? I'm, I'm here. I'm, I'm, I'm chilling. You ready to talk to some listeners? I'm ready, man. All right, let's talk to Will. Will from Georgia. What's up, Will? What's good? I think that was hot, homie. Thank you, man. I appreciate it, Jay. And now you got a, a good swagger. That's going to be hot. You turn a little gangster on us. You're proper, man. I'm going to buy that for sure. Hey, much appreciated, man. You know what it is. I hope you have a wonderful day, man. I appreciate you calling, man. All right, let's talk to Angelo from Mobile. What's up, Angelo? Hey, man, you sound straight and all. Uh, how old are you, though? I'm, I'm, I just turned 20, man. Okay. Yeah, the only thing it sounds a lot like Bow Wow, man. That's yeah, a lot, a lot of people told me that on that on that particular record, but I think it's just I think it's just the brand. I think it's just that lane and that brand of music and that particular sound has been branded by you know him as an individual. But you know, I mean, I think a lot of people do that. They associate it's like the same thing when you do a conscious record. You know, people say you sound like this dude. People say you sound like Kanye or Lupe. I mean, but I feel you. Know, I'm about to play another record. You can tell me. You know, hopefully I, I, I'll change your opinion. But I definitely appreciate it, man. Yeah, keep doing your thing, Blair. All right, let's talk that. to Rob from Boston. What's up, Rob? What do you think? Hey, yo, yo, it was hot, dog. It was straight hot, man. Thank you, man. man. It's coming out of Memphis and in T-Dot. Yeah. I mean, you don't sound like either one, you know what I mean? You, you know, you put your own little thing in there. Cool, man. And I, I, I can that. appreciate that because I, I, know, I know how Memphis is, dog. Yeah. I know a little bit about T-Dot. I used to live in Memphis, so you know. Okay, well, yeah, man, you know what it is. That's what I was saying, man. I'm trying to I'm trying to just keep it original, but I appreciate it, but boy. Like, the other thing, as an artist, man, you got to love going through the gauntlet. You got to love the criticism and all that, and you got to become immune to the haters, and you got to really take people that have constructive constructive criticism, like like the dude that, you know, uh, made the comment about Bauer. You got to take that. You got to listen to what they're saying. But, you know, you can never quit, man. Nobody should ever make you quit. That's one thing I got to say to anybody that's going to send their music in. Don't quit, man. You just got to go harder, man. That's all. So how can people reach you again? Well, you can reach me on the MySpace. You can reach me www.myspace.com slash this is Drake. I got a free download mixtape coming out called Comeback Season. I got everybody on there. I got Trey on there. I got uh, Elzai from Slum Village. I got Little Brother. I got Tanya Morgan. I got Night wow. Wonder on there. I got a whole bunch of people. Definitely take it in. It's, a, it's, it's all different brands of music. And I got the album coming out probably like late summer, fall. I'm, li I'm just looking for the right situation. And if not, like I've done it before, I'll do it myself. That was a little throwback Thursday. That was actually good, Angela. Yeah, it's pretty funny. Yeah. So who who would have knew? You know who else was on there too? Machine Gun Kelly. But I don't have that one. Okay. We might be able to find it. 
No, I don't think so. Okay. Yeah. This somehow really made the rounds. Okay. All right. But when we come back, we have Yee T. We'll be talking about the Central Park Five versus Donald Trump. But this time, they're on the other side. If you mm. know what I mean, it's way up with Angela Yee. Yo, she about to blow the lid up off this pot. Let's get it. Oh, yeah. Angela's spilling that Yee T. Come and get the tea. What's up? It's way up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee. And Jasmine from the Jasmine brand is here. Yes. Coughing her way through the show. Oh, my goodness. I know. You got me right. coughing. Oh, my gosh. TK Kirkland is here coughing, too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Stop Hopefully it. He makes it out to his show. <laughs> right, exactly. In Harlem. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I feel awful. <coughs> stop. Really, Everybody stop it right now. I really now. feel a little, I feel a little <laughs> something. Okay, back to the show. Okay, back to the show. It's time for Yee T. Mm-hmm. All right, so Donald Trump. Um, you remember that he had called for the return of the death penalty. Yeah. He took out a series of ads in 1989, and that was uh, because of the uh, rape case for the Central Park Five, where five black and brown boys were wrongfully accused of rape and assault in New York City. Well, now, more than 30 years later, uh, salam on Donald Trump's indictment. Trump has never apologized for taking out a full-page ad calling for the death penalty for the Central Park Five. New York City Council candidate and exonerated five-member Yusef Salam issued the following statement following the indictment of Donald Trump by the Manhattan District Attorney. Karma! That's the statement. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hashtag yes. powerful. Those powerful. tables do turn. One well, thing about turn. one yes. thing about them tables. That's right. Only thing is, I'm not sure what's going to happen. Like it, you know, I it's totally not until December you. that yep. I the agree judge with you comes 100%. back. When and, I saw that, matter of fact, when you mentioned it to me, I said, "Wow, so much lead time." But I, a man that's been in a uh, few cases in his lifetime, have you been to jail? I, I said, a man who's been in a few okay. cases in his lifetime. Uh huh. To us, it's slow. Okay. But to the person who's going to court, it's like the next day. Oh, it really? It's here. Really like fast? That. Yeah. Okay. And, and no matter what Donald Trump says, no matter how confident he says, see, real is real. When you're in the room by yourself and no hype man around you, the real thoughts start coming into your head. Hmm. And they're not playing with him. All right. Well, the full ad, you can see that online. It's an article. It says, bring back justice and fairness, build a brighter future for Harlem. And then there's a whole article that you guys should check out and support. All right. In the meantime, searches for Stormy Daniels content on Pornhub have skyrocketed since Donald Trump got arrested. She's the porn star who uh, is in the midst of all of this. Uh, storm. Yeah. And in, in, in all the middle of all of this storm, he was indicted on 34. Donald Trump was indicted on 34 accounts of falsifying business records. And he was taken in to get his fingerprints. And so Stormy Daniels is the person that that is the reason for these these allegations. All right. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if she's going to make a lot more money from these searches because I don't know how that works. There's, by the way, a Pornhub documentary on on um, Netflix. Pornhub users searched Stormy more than 650,000 times on Tuesday. Mm-hmm. That's a lot. Yeah. So All right. there you have it. And this is disappointing. Um, Z-Way, her show was canceled at Showtime after two seasons. Aww. So first, Jesus and Meryl uh, are gone, and now Z-Way is gone as well. She started off with her YouTube comedy, Baited with Z-Way. She was a writer on Jesus and Meryl. And then she also co-hosted Crooked Media's Hysteria podcast. She voiced Kamala Harris on the Showtime animated series, Our Cartoon President. And her show, by the way, those clips really used to make the rounds. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty yeah. funny interviews because they, yeah, it'd be like some funny. awkward moments. And she just, she, the thing is, she will sit in silence with these awkward moments too. You just yeah. like. And ask you the craziest questions. You ever seen it, TK? Which one again? Z-Way. <laughs> No, 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 no. I, I, I love this show because y'all are really bringing up my TV IQ yeah, and music like, IQ. I don't time to watch all this. Yeah, yeah. I'm so proud. I'm, I'm told <laughs> you I'm always amazed at you because I see how busy you are. Right. So, um, no, I never saw it. But why did it get canceled? Does anybody know? Because you never saw it. Yep, and there you go. <laughs> all right. Absolutely. Well, that is your UT. <laughs> And when we come back, we have Under the Radar. These are the stories that are not necessarily headline news stories. They are flying under the radar. It's Way Up with Angela Yee. Angela Yee uh, is Way Up. On the way up. Right now, what they are saying, according to Travel and Leisure, the current listing price ranges from $1 million to $8 million to own it. Okay. And there's a small number of 24-year leases available from $600,000, so that's about $25,000 a year. I don't know about it. I don't know about that long, but I would do it for... <laughs> because they might go out of business. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they might go out of business. So I wouldn't go that far, but I, I would do it. It's a good investment as far as if you wanted to like sublet it. No, that's smart. Or if you wanted to resell it later and the value goes yeah. up. If you want to Airbnb. If, it. The if the you want to see Airbnb. Boat, if the boat business don't tank. like <laughs> You know what I'm saying? That's where my mind is. You got to think like that. Just in case. Just now, since we're case. talking about travel, 
Half of the world's 10 busiest airports for 2022 are in the United States. All right. Okay. So Atlanta. Yep. Of course. Number one. Is number one. Number mm-hmm. two is Dallas, Fort Worth. Respect. Three is Denver. Okay. Yes. I can and see that. four is Chicago. Oh, yeah. And then number six is L.A. So number five is Dubai. Mm-hmm. Seven is Istanbul. Eight is London. Nine is Delhi in India. And ten is Paris. Okay. 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 All right. Have I been to all those airports? No. I've been mostly all of them. Mm-hmm. Except Istanbul. And speaking of traveling, Delta, United, and American are going to be slashing flights at three major airports. And unfortunately for us here in New York, mm-hmm. uh, that is going to be JFK, LaGuardia, and Newark. <laughs> Okay. All our airports yes. Okay. Yes. here in New York. So, yes, this summer they have all confirmed that they'll be cutting back departures from those airports. That's to help ease delays and other issues during the upcoming very busy travel season. And those changes could potentially affect up to 10% of each airline's departures from each of the transportation hubs. Wow. So. That doesn't make me happy at all. I fly every. I fly twice a week. Yeah. Yes, you do. You come in here and, and from that DC. Doesn't, that doesn't feel good. <laughs> This news doesn't yeah. feel good. It makes you feel like the prices are going to go up too, right? Yeah. yeah. Yep. I totally agree. I was going to stay here. Yeah. All right. Well, those are your under the radar stories. That is all about travel. Mm-hmm. All about travel. Yeah. All it's right. Something it's- that we all do. And when we come back, we have the Way Up Mix at the top of the hour. Plus, we also have Ask Ye and we have Akeem Woods joining us for Mastery of Comedy. It's Way Up with Angela Ye. Say truth in the room. Ah! From industry shade to all the gossip. Out, out. Angela's spilling that Ye Talk to him. Time for Yeetie, and let's talk that money, the world's billionaire list, the Forbes list. Okay. All right, love to hear about it. And one of the headlines, and I know Kanye's going to be so mad about this, but he has dropped off this list after this end of this partnership with Adidas. Oh, no. Yes, and I know he cares about stuff like that, so I know he is tight. But number one on the list is Bernard Arnault. He is the person that oversees the LVMH empire. That's Louis Vuitton, Moet, Hennessy. Mm -hmm. And they have all the cosmetic brands, Sephora, Louis Vuitton, obviously Hennessy, Moet, all of that. And Mm -hmm. there's 75 different fashion and cosmetics brands. So he is number one. Some of your favorite brands, Angela. Yes, indeed. And you know what? Um, They were saying that people are still buying these luxury goods. And the prices are actually going up. That's because people are spending so much money, even though some will tell you we're in a recession. Yep. (laughs) All right. So um, number two on the list is Elon Musk. Number three is Jeff Bezos. Uh, Warren Buffett's at number five. Bill Gates is at number six. Michael Bloomberg is at number seven. Rihanna, by the way, is number 2002 on the list with $1.4 billion. You see where Kim Kardashian's at? Where is she at? She's 2,259th on the list. But her wealth is down from $1.9 billion last year to $1.2 billion. Yeah, you know, her Skim Shapewear clothing line actually does really well. Yeah, I'm not surprised. By the way, that company is worth an estimated $3.2 billion. Yeah, her sister Kylie is not on the list. And since we're talking about money, Donald Trump has reportedly lost $700 million. That is over his failed social media platform, Truth Social. According to Radar Online, his fortune dropped from $3.2 billion to $2.5 billion. That's because Truth Social has failed to attract users, even though Donald Trump has been promoting this app and also giving his own exclusive, wow, can't believe this happened to me, (laughs) uh, type of messages. So initially it was very exciting and his supporters and fans were here for it, but the app has failed to take off and that's because Elon Musk bought Twitter and also reversed Trump's ban so Trump isn't even banned on Twitter anymore Uh, Truth Social was supposed to have 81 million users by 2026 but right now only has 5 million to date and he owns 85% of the company oh wow Okay. I can't believe he even has 5 million users but I guess so are you a user on this on this app Angela is that a serious question it's a serious question or did you want to cough (laughs) (laughs) I told you, don't mess with her. Don't mess with her, boy. She's dangerous. And then DC was recently on Sh- uh, Shannon Sharp's Club Shay Shay. Okay. <laughs> All right. You know Man DC from Love and Hip Hop yeah. and uh, Yandy. Yandy's husband. Yandy's husband. And so he was talking about his time when he was really deep in the streets. Okay. He was once incarcerated for drug trafficking and he made this confession about just how deep he was in it. He actually admitted to using his mom during those times. Here's what he said. I remember one time um, I was dealing with a connect and at this sound this is gonna sound horrible, but I put my mom up for collateral. I was getting a bunch of keys and they was like, Well, you gotta show me where your mom is at. Because if you you run off on this, you, you, you we can't afford you to run off. Right. And I was like, I ain't had no tensions of running off. Right. So I was like, I right, I'll show you. And she don't she had no idea. Right. 
and I took him. Well, thankfully, you know, things have changed yeah. a lot. Yeah, for sure. And he had the opportunity to grow from that. Yep. And Marcus Houston has responded to backlash. People were talking about the almost 20 year age gap between him and his wife. He's 41 and his wife, Maya Houston, is 22 years old. And he recently was featured on TV One's Uncensored. OK. And they put out a trailer for that. And here's what he had to say about his relationship with his wife. Me and my wife's situation is a little different. When I met my wife, she was 17. So, you know, we had no really conversation and no really connection until, you know, she was of age. And people don't understand it. Of course, I got a lot of backlash for marrying someone that was 19. And, you know, when we did finally start to talk, I was like, this woman is like me. And she was just like, when I would talk to her, she just, for one, we had a spiritual connection. And I feel like that's the most important thing. All right, well, that full episode is going to be airing this Sunday on TV One. Okay. All right, and one last thing. Travis Scott is the only rapper that has uh, surpassed 2 billion streams on each of his albums on Spotify. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's a big deal. That's so. a big deal. Mm-hmm. Now, so that means he's rich off streaming, right? Because you know I'm still learning. Uh, Well, yeah. I think 2 billion streams on each album. All of his albums, that's a lot. So a even lot. though I know you get like pennies right. that's for still, each stream, yeah. that's still a lot. Okay, and he has okay. three official albums, yes. Rodeo, Birds in the Trap, Sing McKnight, and Astroworld. Yeah. All right. Well, that was your YT. And when we come back, TK Kirkland is here with us. And we want to talk to you, TK, about what you have going on. I know you're in New York and you definitely plan out your schedule way in advance. <laughs> so that's coming out. And you did Drink Champs. Yes. And, you know, we want to get some more into TK Kirkland's life. It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I love you. You tapped in and Way Up with Angela Yee. It's Jasmine from the Jasmine brand. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. yes, it is. And TK Kirkland is here. TK. And that is I. What are you doing here in New York? <laughs> listen, listen. You know, I've been working so much, and it's just a pleasure to be here so long. Because normally I come in, boom, and I'm out. But um, this week I'm doing comedy in Harlem. If you're in the city of tri-state area, as we say. Okay. And make sure you come up to... Um, Comedy Harlem this weekend, ladies and gentlemen. Friday, Saturday, they add in shows for Sunday, so I'm truly excited. But oh, they did? You didn't tell us that. Yeah, yeah, they add in, they add in. Well, you get to slip that without saying I'm anything. I'm sorry, baby. This you, you, just happened. You, 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 so Don't bury things, the lead. So many things going on. I, I, you know, I just didn't want to <laughs> intrude, but I thought I was so shocked. So initially it. it was just tomorrow and Saturday, but now it's tomorrow, Saturday, and, and Sunday. And Sunday. Okay. Yep, so You're in high demand. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm not, for OG, that's really phenomenal, yeah. you know? So you can get your tickets at Comedy in Harlem. Ladies and gentlemen, make sure you get your tickets and come through. Um, I think they're rolling Angela's out the red carpet by. for me. Yeah. yeah, they're rolling out the red carpet for Angela. You know, I got to take care of my girl. And there's gonna be and food there too. There's gonna be food there. Mm-hmm. You gonna come? Or you gonna be out of town? I'm gonna be out of town. I okay. Think. Well, the next time we we'll catch you okay. next time. All right. Then, ladies and gentlemen, on April fifteenth, I'm mm-hmm. throwing. My birthday was April third. But April 15th, I'm really throwing the official party because we, when y'all were kids, I used to party from September to <laughs> April because the people used to wow. think I was from their city. Okay. So oh, I charged $10,000 for my birthday party. So not only was I doing stand-up comedy. And back then, that was like worth $80,000. Exactly. <laughs> right. <laughs> she was hilarious. And um, so I party so everybody knew my philosophy and birthdays uh-huh. is every day is my birthday. Okay. I know that's right. right. I love so it. April every 15th. Every day is a birthday. Every yeah. day we celebrate another day here. That's right. It's so true. So we're at the um, Ruth Seaton um, James um, Auditorium, ladies and gentlemen. For tickets, go to www.bdatix.bm. That's for Bermuda. Um, come through if you got a passport. If you got a passport, if your record ain't clean, I'm letting you know now you ain't going to make it back. <laughs> right. Oh, for real? Yeah, yeah. You go. If they oh, find Angela, out you got a warrant, right. you're done. You got a he record. Said I all nervous. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, 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 yeah, yeah, you're done. <laughs> then Atlanta, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Oh, no. Then April 21st, 22nd, Twice as Funny um, Comedy Lounge in um, Colleen, Texas. I'm going to thank them for having me. Um, for tickets, go to twicefunnycomedylounge.com. Get your tickets. Um, I'm excited about them, too. They they okay. gave me exactly what I want. And don't forget Bowler Blocker 2. Yeah, Bowler Blocker 2 is coming out, ladies mm-hmm. and gentlemen. Uh, me, yes. uh, NBA Youngboy, um, Baby. I play a Denzel Washington training type guy. Okay. Training day type. And we're shooting in New Orleans. Okay. And we're going to War Water. That's how they, you know. They have good food that. in the world, yeah, too. Wow. We're going to do our thing down there. Then, then, I'm hitting the city of Chocolate City, Atlanta. Uh, Uptown Comedy Theater, April 27th through the 30th. For tickets, go to atlcomedytheater.com. That's just for this month. And also follow me at TK 
underscore Kirkland to find out where I'm going to be in London, where I'm going to be in um, Okay, international. Paris, you know what I'm saying? Passport, where I'm going to be in... Passport TK. That's right. Where I'm going to be in Germany. That's that's how I do Why it. you have to do an underscore? Somebody had TK Kirkland? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got what? somebody... Yeah, I got... Somebody got TK Kirkland. Somebody's acting like they're me on social media. <laughs> I'm commenting on everybody's platform. Oh, no. And one day I walked into somebody on... I think it was in your studio l- last year. And the girl had an attitude with me. And she said, ain't you the one that be commenting on such and such? I said, what are you talking about? <laughs> so I had to explain to people on different platforms. It's not you. It is not me who's commenting on those platforms. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't have the time. Okay. Like, I would never do something like <laughs> that. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't have the time. it's not me. Yeah, it's not me. It wasn't me. Okay. Yeah, All right. Well, thank you for clearing that up. Thank you, sweetheart. All right. Well, TK, thank you. And listen, we love you as a comedian. And yes. you know, I'm a big comedy fan. Mm-hmm. Yes. And so this next person who's going to be joining us, because today is Mastery of Comedy, okay. is Akeem Woods. Now, we met him with Godfrey. That's your boy, That's too. That's my man. It's Godfrey. Got Godfrey my started. Man. That's right. I sure did. Mm-hmm. And so Akeem Woods is joining us. And, uh, you know, Godfrey brings him out on the road a lot, but he's also headlining his own shows yes. right now. And but, I have uh, to say, if Godfrey is bringing him out, He's good. Yeah. No, Goffrey he is. found something about him. He's hilarious. That's he, that he's talented because Goffrey wouldn't play. All right. So well, I know that. You guys are definitely going to enjoy this. So stay uh, stay tuned here for Mastery of Comedy on Way Up with Angela Yee. Now I'm back, back, back. Now I'm back. Yeah, you vibe the Way Up with Angela Yee. What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee and Jasmine from the Jasmine brand is here. TK Kirkland is here. Yes. Yeah, I am. Listen, we gave TK gifts. He got some Valentino perfume for his daughter yeah, and for himself. Yes. Yeah, sure smelling smelling good, good. Smelling too. great. Right, Everybody right. walks in here and they're like, it smells so good. It does. Mm-hmm. You know, so we're uh, grateful and blessed for that because it could smell bad in here. Yeah, it could. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it yeah, could. Yeah, especially with do? that coffin. Oh, yeah. Listen, <laughs> I gotta I'm going to be it. fine by Monday, okay? okay? I'm about to spray her down. Yeah, spray her down, man. <laughs> <laughs> but no, um, you know, we got a lot going on on the show today. Akeem Woods is going to be joining us. All right. You haven't met him um, before at TK, but you'll enjoy him. Godfrey is the person that okay. introduced and us it, to him. That's, that's all I need is that word. That cosign, huh? That's you right. know what? You've put a lot of people on. Who are some of your favorite comedians? My favorites are people that, I put but, on. But people that are newer now. Mm, that's a good question. Mm-hmm. That's new. Wow. I haven't been following any of the new comics. Okay. I would definitely put DC Young Fly up there. Okay. Mm-hmm. I, I feel he has the potential to be one of the most phenomenal comedians of the next generation and he works hard he, he works hard and he's he stays on the road hey man, carlos miller and chico yeah. bean and all they're gonna them. get the oh and chico bean mm-hmm. and um i'm gonna stop in and see chico bean because he's selling out everywhere and by me being in this game since 1985 before all this started when we was only getting 20 dollars a shot i want to see what the country is seeing i want to see if the comic is really good or is it just hype Right. And if I get the chance to come by and see, I, like, I don't let people know I'm there. I, I, I sneak in the building. Slide in. I sit in the back and I, and I watch you. And I don't go on the road or mm-hmm. talk to people and talk bad about you. I just It's just for me to know where's comedy going. The that's pulse what I of do. comedy right yeah, now. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Okay, yeah. Because I, I love to hear your opinion because you actually have been really instrumental. I heard a lot of people, a lot of comedians talk about you. Yes, yes, yes. You yes. know, in their career. So I, I know that would mean a lot to some I, of these younger comics. Oh, yes. And, and I started letting ca- comics open up for me because mm-hmm. it got to a point I was yeah, just I was doing it by myself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I was doing it by myself. And then lately I, I brought that back in because what comics were not learning is to do clean stand-up comedy. Mm-hmm. They think that's Def Jam all the time, and I want people to know that if you don't want, if you want to work 30, 40 something years, you have to be able to do a little of everything. Like I said earlier, what is your comedy IQ? Mm-hmm. And comedy IQ is a good analogy. Is like a um, what's my man Tom Brady mm-hmm. who walks into a game. He knows his opponent and he does his homework. And that's what comedians have to do. They have to know who they're opening up for. They have to know the audience. Are they smart in science? Are they smart in current events? Mm-hmm. Are they smart in knowing the, the history of white people, blacks? Because right. if you've got all these people in your crowd, a good comedian will have something that will touch on everything for everybody to relate. You bring them to you instead of you, them, you coming to them. You bring the love and attention, bring everybody together in the 45-minute hour um, show. All right, well, with that being said, mm-hmm. right, let's uh, talk to Akeem Woods when we come back from Mastery of Comedy because I feel like we just got a little class and session right there. <laughs> we did. Thank TK you for that. Kirkland is way up with Angela Yee. Right there. More now.
What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee and Jasmine from the Jasmine brand is here with me. Yes, I am. And you know I love a good comedy. Yeah, there's a difference. And so we have Mastery of Comedy today and Akeem Woods is joining us. Yay. Hello. How are you guys? Good oh, to see you. Good to see you. We're on camera? Yeah. Okay, good because I look way too cute tonight. <laughs> with the glasses, the outfit, Everything the matches. matches. I'm like, wait, if this is just radio, I'm going to be upset. <laughs> you would just wear the outfit again. I would just wear it. Yeah, yeah, like you never wore it. <laughs> you look cute. Thank you so much. I'm so glad because the first time we met, I was wearing sweatpants. Oh, you came from a cruise. I just got off a gay cruise, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and I was wearing sweatpants. And then I came in the green room, like, oh, look who's here. I was. They were I talking was so much <laughs> about you too. They was like, where is he? I don't know. I they didn't think they, 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 you were gonna, they didn't think that you were going to make it. I didn't think I was going to make it because the flight got delayed. All right, well, let's talk a little bit about Akeem Woods for everybody on Way Up with Angela Yee. Again, this is Mastery of Comedy. Now you are from Florida. I was born in Brooklyn, but I grew up in Florida. Okay, so you yeah. grew up in Florida. Wait, so what, what age did you move to Florida? Well, I was young, so I can't claim Brooklyn. Yeah. I, can't I, was claim Brooklyn. I know you would like to claim Brooklyn. Yeah, I would love yeah. to claim Brooklyn, but unfortunately, <laughs> I cannot. I moved to Florida when I was like three. So it's, what What part of Florida? I grew up in a really small town part of Florida called Palm Bay, Florida. Mm-hmm. Look at Jasmine's face. She's like, it's terrible. (laughs) It's very, oh, it's very conservative, very homophobic, very racist. I'll put it like this: like there was like one gay club in Palm Bay, Florida, and uh, it burned down. And then like two or three days later, like it was arson. I'm like, duh. Duh. (laughs) No one was like, oh my god, how did our gay club burn down? We're just like, who did it? Like it was probably the mayor. Like it was, (laughs) it was the mayor. Yeah, it was bad. I saw that you never had a chance to come out to your mom. Yeah, she yeah, yeah, yeah. She, d- yeah. My mom knew I was gay. cause like my mom would do. I, I go, like she was an old school Southern black woman, so she would do stuff like that made my brother mad. Cause like my brother would always ask my mom, is like, hey, can I spend the night at like Christina's house? Right. And my mom was like, no. Like, why did mm-hmm. I let you spend that? Night? Like, of course not. And my brother got mad because I was always like buying me. He's like, that's not fair. You let a keem spend the night at Chelsea's house. And my mom couldn't say what it was. Right, right. So she was just like, so you don't think your brother knew? Yeah, everyone knew. So your brother should have, in his head, been like, "Okay, I, but he yeah. was just trying to get what he but wanted." But he was to get. already. He, he. I think. I think everyone knew, but no <laughs> one wanted to like. Like I always say, I was in the closet, but like it was a glass closet. Okay. Like no one. Like you when knew, I knew, but yeah. no one opened the. Yeah, yeah. Door. So when I finally. Yeah, yeah. Need to be said. <laughs> when I finally. <laughs> <that> voice, <laughs> when I finally came out, they were like, "Oh, like a few people, like what, Akeem?" <laughs> but most people were like, "Yeah, dude, that tracks." When yeah. did you realize you were gay? Fifth grade, Eddie. I, he might see this. He's so fine. Eddie was my was my fifth grade crush. Okay. And he's still fine. That's when I knew fifth grade. Okay. Yeah. All right. So let me ask you this. Last time we saw you was on lip service. I was. Right. And we Those had gave comments. you some. Oh my god. I know. I'm sorry about that too. It's not your fault. Yeah. I made a video about it. I saw. We saw. <laughs> oh, you did. Yeah. <laughs> Don't be mad. <laughs> I, am, I, am, I am. Tell, tell everyone what the, what the agreement okay, so, was. Okay, so, Akeem, you talk about I it. I love you, Angela, but she gave me bad advice. Uh, okay. <laughs> so, and the advice was? Okay, so I was talking to this dude, and we met on Tinder, and I came on the show, and we were t- I was telling hookup stories, because I, yes. I hook up a decent amount, because, you know, I'm a cute guy. I'm out in these streets. Trollop Tales. <laughs> Trollop Tales. Yes. I'm on episode 10 now, so there's been a lot. And <laughs> so she was like, you, which I, I I think your advice was good. I don't I don't know if I executed it right. Okay. So she was like, don't sleep with him. On, on the first date. You said, wait three dates. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> to be clear, I said that because you always do it. Correct. I would always do it on the first date. And yeah, it yeah. never was turning into more than a That is That is correct. So what happened? He was under the impression that I wasn't into him. Okay. So immediately, I got put into the friend zone. Well, y'all could have kissed or something. I didn't know the rules, so I, I didn't. Said, Don't di- what in my in my in my head? Well, if I kiss, I can't you can't control. kiss and not have sex. I know, you know? I can't. What? <laughs> like no, if I kiss a dude. And we're in a place where sex can happen. Why would we not? Or just kiss outside after the, and then put your leg. You know how you have to. But kiss you know, I can kind of understand that. <laughs> but I took, I, I took it like don't do anything, and he and he took it like, oh, this dude doesn't like me at yeah, all. I didn't say don't act <laughs> interested. So, so it didn't work out. Not at all. Okay. Friend zone immediately. I haven't talked to him since. And okay. you could have said, you know, I just I really do like you. I could have said that. Yeah. And I didn't. Why so didn't what you were say you doing? Because I wanted to do the three date thing. Mm-hmm. So I knew that if I was if I was was too interested that I wouldn't last the three dates. <laughs> 
Well, so I, I was very like reserved on the first day, and <laughs> okay. I was very much like, "What do you like to do?" I wasn't touching on him or anything. So I think he just thought he's like, "Oh, this dude's not really." Because you gotta have the- good body language too. You gotta like put your hand on his yeah, leg like, when you're talking. I wasn't doing any of that. You gotta still give clues that you're interested. Just don't have sex. We'll see. You it didn't don't, say don't, that. Don't take your pants off. <laughs> yeah, don't take you your didn't pants say off. that. Okay, <laughs> you're an adult. You could have used your. Con- you could have figured the rest of this out. I didn't. I know. I, I didn't know I had to give that explicit. You did. I don't know. I just thought that I wasn't allowed to do anything, so I didn't do anything. And okay. now here we are, single. <laughs> well, he wasn't the, like, well, he wasn't the one. Yeah, he was he ready to. F. He was fine too. All right, Akeem Woods is here with us, mastery of comedy. Now, Jasmine, you have a question. How'd you get started with comedy? I start, I'm 32. I started when I was 19. Mm-hmm. I started before I came out because I didn't come out until I was 26. Okay. So it was just, I was always like the funny guy in high school and like the, everyone's like, oh my God, you used to do comedy. So I just, I went to, I Googled stand-up comedy in Orlando. Mm-hmm. It took me to the improv, the Orlando improv, but I was 19 at the time. You have to be 21 and up. Oh. So I couldn't go. So then I called them like, you should go to an open mic. So I'm like, what's that? So I Googled open mic and then I went to a place called Austin's Coffee in Winter Park <laughs> and it was on Sunday and I went and I did terrible. Okay. Like, really, really bad. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, I was working at Burger King at the time, but then I drove back to Burger King. <laughs> and f- it was bad, but it wasn't bad enough that I didn't want to keep doing it. So yeah. I'm like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come next week. And when I when just, you say it was bad, no one laughed? No. I got one laugh. Okay. okay. And I don't think it was for me. I think they were laughing <laughs> at, at you. how bad it was. Yeah, yeah I don't think they were <laughs> laughing. We like you. Yeah, yeah, I don't think they're like, oh my God, you're funny. Like, ha, 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 don't quit Burger King. <laughs> at least you didn't get booed. No, I have got booed before. But, but you not there. Not the first time. Okay. Um, okay. I got booed many, many years later. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, that sucks. Because that's probably at a point when you're like doing well, I got, better. This is what happened. I got booed when I had just came out. I was doing. Do you know Rod Z? Mm-mm. Rod Z is a uh, urban comic. He's funny, but his crowds are like really urban church growing crowds. Okay. So my friend Ken Miller's on stage. And someone didn't show up, and I live by the club. So he's like, hey, like, give me the light when you get here, and I'll bring you on stage. Okay. Now, mind you, I just came out. So I'm wearing, like, really tight jeans, <laughs> and I'm wearing a Hollister shirt, because I thought that all gay people wore Hollister. Right. This is what I thought. So when you came out, you started dressing differently. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because okay. this is what I thought. I'm like, I'm a gay man. <laughs> I'm, in a, I'm, in, I'm in a live yeah. green... <laughs> I'm in a lime green Hollister <laughs> shirt. Oh, I'm gosh. in skinny jeans that are ripped. I'm like dressing like the way I think gay people are supposed to right, dress, right? Right, right, right. <laughs> so, so you have to go buy a whole new wardrobe. I ha- yeah, you came out? because when I I was wearing baggy stuff. I, oh, girl, it was bad. I was I wasn't wearing colors because I didn't want people to think I was gay, so I wasn't wearing bright that's colors. Crazy. That's I was so wearing like okay, black. Okay, that's the story. So you okay. show up. So I show looking up. Gay. Looking gay, <laughs> and I get on stage, and Ken brings me on stage, and before I touch the mic, this lady in the audience was like, "This, <laughs> like, <laughs> she just said that before I touch the mic." I was like, "Oh no!" <laughs> <laughs> so I did my first joke, got a little bit of a laugh, okay. and then I did the punchline silence. Okay. And then I start trying to get into another joke. People start booing, but then someone download like the siren app on the phone and then they shared it and then everyone in the in the audience 300 people were playing the siren app are you serious yes they were pl- they were like playing the siren that's app while I was on stage that's getting booed girl these three I've women heard. that's very <laughs> malicious it yes. is yes these three women sitting up front got up and like fake like they had to use the bathroom like you know you bombing when someone pretends like they have to pee oh my like, gosh <laughs> oh my goodness it was so bad and they were mad at me like after the show they're like no we just want to talk to him we just want to see him and I just stay in the green I'm like no I don't want to see these people alright well Akeem Woods is here for Mastery of Comedy when we come back we have some more with him and listen where do you guys hear these stories it's way up with Angela Yee hey now back yeah she back at it bring it bring in the back back Way Up with Angela Yee is on. What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee. This is Jasmine Brand. And mm-hmm. we have the hilarious, very gifted Akeem Woods here with us. He's a comedian. Now, let's talk about what you have coming up. Because you are on a tour. I am. Right now. So we want to make sure that we promote that. Promote it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, this weekend, I'm in Austin, Texas. I'm headlining uh, Cap City Comedy Club, April 7th and 8th. So buy tickets to that, at mm-hmm. But the main one I'm trying to get tickets for, because they give me a bonus if I sell out. Let's so, go, so. let's go, let's go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Come to Cap City, but who cares? I'm trying to get this bonus. <laughs> um, I'll meet a comedy club. It's in the Bay Area. Bay Area. Bay Area. In the Bay. In the Bay. So at com, a media com, I'll meet a comedy club uh, April 14th and 15th. Uh, those four shows. 
I don't remember the times. Okay. No, so the times are uh, 7 o'clock, 9 o'clock, and then Saturday, 7 o'clock and 9 o'clock. Correct. Those so. are the times. <laughs> Akeemwoods.com, Amita Comedy Club, April 14th and 15th, and then I believe April 28th and 9th. Indianapolis. Indianapolis yeah. Helium mm-hmm. Comedy Club. Come to those as well, but mainly go to... <laughs> <laughs> we need y'all to come out to the bank. Where you yeah. are, come to all these you come shows. To all these shows. But I do want to point out that we only first met you when you were performing yes at the DCM and we were like we love him he's yeah. so funny yeah. Oh, you guys are so, sweet. so that's why I want to encourage people to come out and support because you yes. are really funny thank mm-hmm. you so much I really appreciate it do you remember that. what it was like quitting your job to finally be able to be I like I'm making it I do enough? my manager kind of made me my manager Danny who I love I was working at a breakfast cafe called First Watch it got to the point where I was calling out all the time because mm-hmm. I had gigs or I was on the road or I had something so eventually my manager was like I was down to like two days a week and mm-hmm. I was the only person that was working two days a week because technically you had to work four. Right. And everyone was like picking up my shifts because I was a terrible server, by the way. <laughs> Awful. Like, I was girl. Ask how you were. Okay. <laughs> Awful. I was just so fun that people were like, oh my God, he messed up our order again, but he's so fun. Right. Like, I was, I was trash. <laughs> like, he should have fired me and he never did because he liked he your personality. Came, yeah. He came to my yeah. shows. He was really supportive. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. And eventually he sat me down. He's like, listen, dude, you're working one or two days a week. You keep calling off. Just quit. And you're terrible. Yeah. And you're Terrible. And yeah, you're yeah, not yeah. the best, yeah. Yeah, he's like, I'm not going to fire you because, you know, I want to help, but, like, just... Are you, you're making decent money just quit and I'm like okay and then eventually he was like he eventually just was like stop coming in so I just quit <laughs> <laughs> but I was bad I was really really bad that's Asserted. hilarious yeah, what's the awful. end goal for you like what to you is like this is where this is my plan my 5 year plan my 10 year plan I don't know I wanna I wanna this year I wanna do a special either half hour special or hour special so okay. that's what I'm working out now is like I'm working out this hour I want to do a special with someone either like Netflix or HBO or whoever wants to give me a special so that's what I want to do this year or this year or next year so yeah I just want to I want to tour more and I gotta get I gotta get my followers up so yeah make sure y'all follow my Instagram you know too. what don't follow his Twitter cause you've tweeted like five times <laughs> in the past do not follow my Twitter am I following you on Instagram you I think you are okay. yeah I, right. I, I, no, what happened with Twitter you just went on there I and gave changed your up. mind my first t- my first tweet was to Chick Fil A. I was like, "Yo, y'all still hate gay people?" Because I'm trying to eat this chicken sandwich. Like that was my first tweet. I love it. And then I tweeted like two comedy clips, and then I actually went viral on Twitter. Not me, but like a story I told went viral on Twitter. Uh, I told the U-Haul story on Horrible Decisions okay. that podcast, and it went it went viral on Black <laughs> Twitter because they were like they were like shaming me because a long you story had short, sex in a U-Haul. yeah, I had I had a threesome in a U-Haul, yeah, and everyone was shaming me like, "How dare you tell that story?" I'm like. This is a podcast where you tell horrible decisions. Yeah, that's a hor- this is the perfect. Yeah, there's been crazier stories. <laughs> yeah, <on>. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but it went viral on Black Twitter, like crazy viral. And then that's why I got a, a decent amount of followers on Twitter. <laughs> and then I just did nothing with them. So please follow. What's my- your Instagram? It's Akeem Woods on Instagram. A K E E M Woods. I just got the 10K. So oh, we got to get you way. I know. That. <laughs> It's bad, but I post a lot. I post I post trial up tears every every Tuesday or Thursday. I post a new trial up tear. I post stand up clips all the time. Mm-hmm. I post tour dates. I post I post that video when I read all the homophobic comments I got, <laughs> so which funny. were a lot. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Well, oh. thank you so much. And again, AkeemWoods.com. Yes. For so tickets. you guys can see all of his show dates. Get those tickets, especially the ones in the Bay Area. Yes. <laughs> I'll meet April 14th and 15th. Let's sell it out so I can pay these bills. <laughs> You good. Mm, I am, but still. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, that was Master Your Comedy with Akeem Woods. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Up. All right. And when we come back, we have Ask Ye. You can ask us anything. 800-292-5150 is the number. It's Way Up with Angela Ye. Hey, everybody. Access. Whether it's relationship or career advice, Angela's dropping facts. So you should, you should know. This is Ask Ye. What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee, and it is Ask Yee. 800-292-5150 is the number. We'd love to hear from you. And we have Jalen with a question. Hey, Miss Yee, how you doing? Hey, Jalen, what's your question for Ask Yee? My question is, how do you deal with in-laws who overstep without offending anyone or coming off as like being disrespectful? Well, tell me what you mean by overstep just overstepping in the sense of pretty much just getting in business I feel like you shouldn't be in. Can you give us an example? I just feel like a lot of things like telling me like her um, my wife's and it's not even really her father it's her stepfather. He'll, he'll say things like oh you need to 
But it's just a bunch of needs, or not. Instead of telling me what he thinks I should do, is you need to this or you need to that. Instead of just giving me like his opinion, it's more so like an order. Mm. Is it possible to just say thank you and keep it moving and not feed into it? <laughs> mm. I mean, yeah, that's true. I could do that. Just say thank you and keep it moving, but it's kind of and, and he also do it like in front of folks too. Mm. So. It's almost like ego stroking almost for him. Right. Right. And listen, that's not your problem. That sounds more like his problem. And sometimes we feed into things because then that's your ego too. Like, why would he do that in front of that? When sometimes you're making something maybe a bigger deal. You can't control what someone else does, but what you can control is your reaction, right? That's true. And so what you can is say true. is just be like, all right, thank you. Always love when you tell me what I need to do. Thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because for real, because like you said, it's his ego. So he's doing that and he knows what your reaction is going to be. Yeah. So sometimes when you don't mm-hmm. give people what they're trying to get from you, that's what will make them stop rather than you having to be confrontational because it feels like maybe that's kind of what he wants. Right. Yeah, that's true. That makes perfect sense. I appreciate that, you. Because, you know, I'm petty. I'll be like, oh, what else do I need to do? Yeah. Word. Okay. <laughs> well, cool. Do yeah, me, like, do me a favor. Can you write all that off. and send it to me in a text? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah, but look, control your yeah. own reaction because I feel like things can get blown out of proportion when you have this, like, kind of building up in you and you can just let it go. I mean, because it sounds... I, and I could be wrong and I don't want to downplay how you're feeling, but it seems like... It is something that bothers you, but if you can learn to just put it into perspective and deal with it differently, then it could be something that doesn't have that same effect on you because you're letting it affect you. Right. That makes sense. You know, and if you could talk to your wife about it, too, I feel like as long as she knows how you feel and she respects it, then it's always team you against them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you yeah, know, she, and she does. She does respect it. But I don't I don't I also don't want to put her in a bad spot to where she's having to pick a side. Yeah. Well, she needs to pick your side, so <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And when he does it, all she got to do is give you a hug and every time he does it and y'all just have your own little inside laugh joke. Mm-hmm, got a little communication about it. <laughs> and then it could turn into a joke like, okay, when he comes today, let's write down how many times he says what I need to do. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm going to try that and we'll laugh about it. Exactly. <laughs> a, a nice, a private joke. And let us know how it works. Yeah, I'd love posting. to hear it. But listen, okay. anytime you start it's getting okay, mad, just count that. to 10 backwards in your head. That'll calm you right down. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I'll do that. All right. Bye. All right, thank you. All right, well, that was Ask Ye. Jalen's funny. He sounded like he was a cool guy. Yeah, he was. Uh, he sounded concerned, but, you know, reasonable. Right, right. Yeah. All right, well, we have last word when we come back, and that's when you guys, of course, because this is your show, you get to have the last word. 800-292-5150 is a number at all times. You can have the last word. Just call us up. It's Way Up with Angela Ye. Pick up the phone. Tap in. Tap in and get your voice heard. What the word is. Here's the last word on Way Up with Angela Yee. It's a good time with you today. Yeah. Yes, we did, hon. These past three days. This past three days. Listen, did, we just made up for what COVID did to us. <laughs> you know, because COVID shut it down. I couldn't see you for mm-hmm. three years. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, you know, um, I'm, I'm, I'm always happy. And people, for you know, I always call her. I always check on her. He I does. always say hello. And if she doesn't get back by a certain time, I'll text and say, I know. I know. You saw my text. He does. He does. I definitely will say that to her. And what did she respond and back and say? Hi, I'm sorry. I was busy. <laughs> but that's all it takes. That's all. But that's I my girl. I did my voice. Yeah. How's it, how was her voice? I'm sorry. Said, Hi, I'm sorry. I'm busy. <laughs> and it's a text message. But I know she said. <laughs> you know her tone. Said. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you to, um, to Dan, to Angela, to Jazz, all you guys, to the staff, iHeart. Thank you for showing me man love. And you know, already know, I'm booking myself right now for, for next, next year. year. Yes. <laughs> and listen, I will see you um, at the comedy show uh, in, Har- in Harlem. Yes, this weekend, ladies This weekend, yeah. where they'll be rolling out the red carpet for me. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> this is a great They hear show you too. They listen, they're going to make sure they do it for you and too. Jamie, if you don't, okay, I'm going to talk about you. Yep, she should. She, she needs, she <laughs> needs listen food. Listen to me. She needs food. You do not want her. 
to talk about you. Food and tequila. You know, it's like Angela can either break you or make you. <laughs> <laughs> but also, thank you to Akeem Woods for joining us. Make sure y'all check him out. Follow him. If you have an opportunity to see him perform ever, make sure you go because he is hilarious right. also. All right. It was Mastery of Comedy. And thank you guys for joining us. We had such a good time. And now we have a last word. That's where y'all get to leave your comments, you know, leave your feedback, ask any questions you want to ask. This is all about you. It is the last word on Way Up with Angela Yee. I'd like to shine a light on my mom simply because I'm just now, like, realizing the troubles of being a single mom and, like, having your children and not knowing what the hell you're going to do. And I just want to shine a light on my mom because I didn't understand it when I was younger, but now that I have two, I have a boy and a girl. It's just a whole different ballpark of, wow, I can't believe you did this to us. And just, I want to shine a light on my mom with all my heart. Hey, Angela Yee. I want to shine a light on all the single dads doing their thing, going to work, taking care of their kids. Uh, moms always get bitched up, as they should, but the dads need some love, too, especially the single dads out here. So I just want to shine a light on all the single dads, including moi. Nobody really pats me on the back, so, you know, sometimes you got to do it yourself. But, uh, yeah, congratulations on your new show been a big big fan for the longest and i hope you exceed all your goals that you have set for your new show have a nice day hi i like to uh shine a light on this young man at this uh homeless shelter that i work at uh i told him to listen in uh, i because i hope that he hears it because he always has his little radio with him and i'm not going to say his name because of him for purpose I'm, I'm not you know not sure about if i'm able to give his name or, or whatnot but he done two tours in Vietnam. Uh, he was awarded, uh, ended up getting discharged, came home. Uh, it was hard for him to get a job, and, and things happened in life. And he actually became homeless. Uh, but living out in the cold, he had frostbitten and lost uh, both his legs, became a double amputee. Also lost uh, four of his fingers on his right hand. And every time you see this guy, every single time you see him, he has the word of God coming out of his mouth. A smile on his face, a gleam in his eye, a joke for you, a kind word, something to just uplift you. And you ask him, how can you be this way with everything you've been through? He said, I'm homeless, but I'm not hopeless. Come on, man. Angela Yee. Angela Yee. Hey, man, check us out. Check us out down here in Jackson, Florida. Yeah, we, we listening. We listening, baby. We listening. It's Scotty Hendrick. Stormy Daniels, I want your pretty toes, girl. So stormy, stormy, do you adore me? Because you told Donald Trump you bore me. You said he doesn't please you in bed. And you laugh when the hairpiece falls off his head. Big chocolate, the toe sucker. Got another hit song, Ange. Going way up, turn up, turn up. with Angela Yee.